Welcome to Influenza Outbreak Management in Long-Term Care Facilities. This training provides general information about influenza, more commonly called the flu, and reviews specific ways to prevent and control influenza outbreaks. Influenza is caused by viruses that infect the nose, throat, and lungs. Those older than 65, those with underlying medical conditions like heart disease or diabetes, and infants are at higher risk for severe illness and death. The best way to prevent the flu is by getting a flu vaccine each year. Flu season is most often in late fall and winter. It is spread mainly by droplets when an ill person coughs or sneezes. Flu can also spread when people touch a surface contaminated by flu virus from an ill person and then touch their own mouth or eyes before washing their hands. You may be able to spread flu to someone else even before you know you are sick. Someone ill with flu can shed virus from one day before symptoms start until five to seven days after becoming sick. Some people, especially young children and people with weakened immune systems, might shed virus for an even longer time. Flu symptoms include fever with cough, chills, headache, sore throat, runny nose, and just feeling awful. Influenza can enter long-term care settings from newly admitted residents, long-term care staff, and visitors. Unless we take steps to prevent it, influenza can readily spread among residents and staff. Residents of LTC facilities can experience severe and fatal illness during influenza outbreaks. Stopping spread of influenza and other infections in long-term care facilities requires a multifaceted approach that includes vaccination, testing, infection control, antiviral treatment, and antiviral chemoprophylaxis, which is the use of antivirals to prevent infection. Influenza vaccination should be provided routinely to all residents and staff of long-term care facilities. If possible, all residents should receive trivalent inactivated flu vaccine before each flu season. This vaccine is usually available beginning in September. Influenza vaccination should begin in long-term care facilities as soon as vaccine is available. Sometimes, a new resident is admitted after the influenza vaccination program has concluded. In this case, the new resident should be offered flu vaccine as soon as possible after admission. The CDC recommends that all healthcare personnel in the U.S. get vaccinated each year against influenza. Long-term care staff who get vaccinated help to reduce the following. Transmission of influenza, staff illness and absenteeism, influenza-related illness and death. By getting vaccinated, long-term care staff can reduce influenza-related illness and even deaths. Once flu season starts, long-term care facilities should monitor for influenza-like illness among residents, staff, and visitors. This should continue until the end of influenza season. If more than one staff or resident has influenza-like illness, notify your local health department. During an outbreak, once a single case of influenza is lab-confirmed, there will likely be other cases brewing among exposed persons. Conduct daily active surveillance until at least one week after the last confirmed influenza case occurred. It's hard to distinguish the flu from other causes of respiratory illnesses based on symptoms alone. If influenza-like illness appears in your facility, get testing done early. Flu outbreaks also sometimes occur outside of the usual influenza season. Influenza testing should occur when any resident or staff member has signs and symptoms of influenza-like illness. When there is laboratory-confirmed influenza along with other cases of acute respiratory illness in a unit of a long-term care facility, an influenza outbreak might be occurring. Any outbreak of influenza-like illness in a long-term care facility should be reported promptly to your local health department. Test for influenza in the following. Ill persons in affected units and in other areas of the facility. Persons who develop acute respiratory symptoms more than 72 hours after beginning antiviral chemoprophylaxis. Note, elderly persons and other long-term care residents may have atypical symptoms with influenza virus infection and may not have fever. Ensure that the laboratory promptly notifies the facility of any positive test results. 
Notify your local health department of any suspected or confirmed influenza outbreak in your facility, especially if someone develops influenza during or after antiviral chemoprophylaxis. Infection control Use standard and droplet precautions for all residents with suspected or confirmed influenza. Standard precautions are recommended for all patients in all healthcare settings, regardless of suspected or confirmed diagnosis. Examples of standard precautions include using gloves, gowns, and face protection if contact with contaminated surfaces or body fluids is anticipated, changing gloves and gowns after each patient encounter followed by hand hygiene, performing hand hygiene before and after touching patients, their environment, or when applying and removing gloves. Droplet precautions Use droplet precautions to supplement standard precautions and prevent the spread of respiratory pathogens such as influenza. Use droplet precautions for residents with suspected or confirmed influenza for 7 days after illness onset or until 24 hours after resolution of fever and respiratory symptoms, whichever is longer. Give ill residents a private room if available, or place residents with influenza together. This is known as cohorting. Residents with influenza-like illness should be in droplet precautions. That is, staff caring for them and those who visit them should wear masks at all times within 6 feet of the patient. Masks should be removed and disposed of when leaving the room and hand hygiene performed. Residents who need to move outside of their room should wear a mask. Other important infection control measures during an influenza outbreak include isolation or cohorting of ill residents, screening employees and visitors for illness, sending ill staff home until they are no longer contagious, and discouraging ill visitors from entering the facility. People with influenza may continue to shed virus while on antiviral treatment, so standard and droplet precautions should continue while the resident is taking antiviral therapy. Treatment any long-term care facility resident with confirmed or suspected influenza should receive antiviral treatment immediately. Don't wait for laboratory confirmation. Antiviral treatment works best when started within the first two days of symptoms. However, these medications can still help when given after 48 hours to those that are very sick. Commonly used antiviral drugs for influenza include Oseltamivir, trade name Tamiflu, Zanamivir, trade name Relenza, and Paramivir, trade name Rapivab. Amantadine and Remantadine are not recommended due to antiviral resistance among influenza A viruses. Chemoprophylaxis Residents All eligible residents in the long-term care facility should receive antiviral chemoprophylaxis as soon as an influenza outbreak at the facility is confirmed. When at least two patients are ill within 72 hours of each other, and at least one resident has lab-confirmed influenza, start antiviral chemoprophylaxis for all non-ill residents regardless of flu vaccination status. Give priority to residents living in the same unit or floor as an ill resident. Prophylaxis is intended to prevent influenza in residents who may be exposed to the virus. While highly effective, Antiviral chemoprophylaxis is not 100% effective in influenza prevention. CDC recommends the prophylaxis continue for at least two weeks and for at least seven days after the last known case's symptom onset. Personnel Consider chemoprophylaxis for employees, regardless of their influenza vaccination status, if the outbreak is caused by an influenza strain that is not well matched by the vaccine. Drug-resistant strains can develop. If residents receiving antiviral meds don't respond to treatment or become sick after starting chemoprophylaxis, notify the health department. Additional measures to consider. Here are additional measures you can use to control long-term care facility outbreaks. Have ill residents stay in their own rooms as much as possible. During the outbreak, avoid group activities consider serving all meals in resident rooms when the outbreak is widespread. Avoid new admissions or transfers to wards with symptomatic residents. 
post notices limiting visitation and exclude ill persons from visiting the facility. Post signs reminding people to wash their hands and to cover their coughs, if ill. Monitor staff absences due to respiratory symptoms and exclude those with influenza-like symptoms from work until at least 24 hours after fever resolves. Restrict personnel movement from affected areas of the facility to unaffected areas. Having an effective infection prevention and control program at your long-term care facility is key in preventing and managing influenza outbreaks. Every long-term care staff member plays an important role. By working together, we can reduce influenza illness in long-term care facilities among residents as well as staff members.